Welcome to Watch and Learn. Today, we're gonna see how Christina is going to quilt her seeing stars. Stick around. I'm Kim Sandberg, and with me today is... Christina Whitney. We're both studio educators here at Handy Quilter, and we are continuing our series here, moving along with the Seeing Stars Quilt Along. And Christina, your quilt top's done. Yes. It's loaded, <laughs> and you are actually quilting it. You guys mm -hmm. might be able to see a little bit of the quilting here. Um, so let's talk about what you're doing with your quilt. Okay, so first of all, this quilt is a beast. Uh -huh. Most of the quilts that I make generally do end up being very large quilts. So this one is um, 90 by 108. And so did you, you didn't follow the pattern exactly in the block layout. You added an extra row, is that right? I did. It should have been five by five and I did five by six. Okay. So, so. going for an extra, extra length on your quilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Perfect. So the issue that I came across with that was that the backing, I got 108 inch wide backing. Mm -hmm which would have been great for the 90 inch wide side. Yeah. But I only had just over three yards, which is about 110 inches oh, tight for the other one. So um, I'm gonna be pointing out some ways that I deal with a small backing. Okay. Because we, I mean, even though we do recommend the extra four inches, we yeah. know that in that perfect world, <laughs> it doesn't always happen. No. So you do have yeah. some really good tips on how to work around that. Yep. So. I've, I've even had to quilt quilts where the quilt top itself was larger than the backing. I've done that too. And there's ways to finagle it. We're not going to go into a whole lot of that no. today, but no. yeah, luckily I ended up with about an extra inch on either side of, for the backing. Okay. So, and I chose to do it loaded the long way okay so that my shortness of the backing would be along the side gotcha rather than at the top and the bottom mm. with it being on the sides i have a little bit more control as i'm quilting because mm. each time i advance i can see you know where i'm at yeah whereas you know sometimes when you're quilting along and you tighten up maybe the top more than the bottom or vice versa mm. and then you get to the bottom you're like oops so I didn't want to deal with that. Yeah, you don't, we wouldn't want to quilt on a leader or anything like that. <laughs> Never do something like that. <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay. Um, one other thing that I noticed you did with your backing, um, you actually loaded it. <laughs> did you load, which side of the fabric did you decide to use? Okay, so I, I didn't do this on an accident. This was a purposeful mm -hmm. decision. Yes. So the backing that I did have, um, it was one I had on hand. I didn't want to go find a new one because, mm -hmm. you know, I like to use up my stash because yeah. it just keeps multiplying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, sidetracking there. So I had this gray fabric with some hashtag marks on mm -hmm. it, and I didn't really like how bold it was, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. So I opted to use the wrong side of the fabric, so it was a little bit more muted. So I purposefully loaded my backing upside down so that it would uh -huh. show the wrong side of the fabric on purpose. Okay, I love that. So. And, and I've done that several times. Yeah. If I, sometimes I'm just sick of fabric. <laughs> certain, <laughs> certain kinds of fabric when yeah, you yeah. see it so much, you're uh -huh. like, eh, I'm sick of that one. Let's see what the other side looks like. Yeah. And, and it gives it a different look. It does, so. it definitely does. Yeah. So. And I felt like it fit better with the quilt top. It's a little more muted, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Good call. All right, so next okay. things. So next thing, I had to pick out my designs. Yes. For yes. this quilt, I actually ended up doing everything pro stitcher, which is kind of backwards because yeah, last week yeah. you did yours, some free motion, some micro quilting, like you went all out last week. And I did free motion on a project and Christina didn't. <laughs> I'm going to do all free or all, <laughs> all pro, pro stitcher, stitcher on this one. So, good, good call though. I yeah. love the design that you're doing. I think it's perfect for, for your quilt. Yeah. So. I, like you mentioned last week, you opted to use the Infinity. Mm -hmm. I'm using the same machine because that's what we had set up. Yeah. And it's very convenient. <laughs> so with real life quilting, I will use the, the largest machine that I can, especially when I'm running Pro Stitcher. Yeah. Because I can fit more things in. But I did want to point out, if we look at this block here, if I bring the machine over, and I'm going to measure this just so we can show people how tall this block is. We. That is about 18 inches. Mm -hmm. So most of the machines, you're not going to be able to stitch a full 18 inch block That's on there. That's true, true. I'm going to turn that measure off. Yeah. So I 
came up with another solution. There's there's several ways that you can work around this. Yes. You can quilt this whole thing in like advancing the fabric and stuff. Mm -hmm. We've got a different video that talks about quilting oversized blocks. Mm -hmm. I would suggest though for most of our users a much easier way to do this would be to get two triangles. Okay. So looking at this block again, I would set up an area from here to here to here and it would come across and okay. I would put a triangle in that section. A triangle design. Triangle design. shape design. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Stitch that out, mm -hmm. do it all the way across, advance my fabric, and then create an area for the bottom half. Mm -hmm. Take that same triangle but flip it mm -hmm. over and stitch it on the bottom section. That's that's a perfect idea and it's definitely thinking outside of the box because normally when you look at a triangle shaped design you're going to use it in a triangle shaped area which yeah. this is not. Yeah, so, but that good way tip. you only have to have nine inches of throat space exactly. to be able to do that. Which really any of our machines that would work on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my tip for those that are using anything smaller than you know the infinity. <laughs> which is all of the machines. Yeah. No. The Forte you could probably get away with it yeah. or the Amara 24. Yeah, I think I think you could I think you could just eke it out as as long as you're not using like a really thick batting. You'd yeah. be able to work all the way through with it. And my concern with this quilt being so big mm -hmm. is that by the time I advance and I get mm -hmm. to the very bottom, I am going to have some build up on this take up bar yeah. to shrink my throat space. So it, even with the the 24, I might have been pushing it. Yeah. So, yeah, you might have been but I did only do one layer of batting, so it won't okay. be quite as much buildup. I'm just using an 80-20 batting. Okay. Uh, the thread that I chose, oh, let's look at this. Mm. I'm going to pull it off of here and hope that I don't accidentally unthread because <laughs> I don't want to rethread it again. I love the thread that you picked. Okay. So looking at it right there, it looks a little bit bold kind of. Yeah, it does. But I wanted to have a, just a tiny bit of pop of color mm -hmm. in this white section but I didn't want it to be like the star of the show. Right. So if you look at this piece that I've got just kind of puddled here, mm -hmm. you yeah. don't really notice it quite as much, but right. it does have a little bit of color there. Mm -hmm. That's the thread that I chose. It is an Omni from Superior Threads. Nice, light, sagey, yep. green, springy, springy green. Oh. And it, and I it love looks, our descriptions. It looks, I know. We'll just create our own new vocabulary for, <laughs> for everything. Um, I love I love that you did pick a thread that's got a little bit of contrast because you've got a lot of white uh, space to quilt in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna focus on the, the big block for right now. Okay. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is create my area. Mm -hmm. And for this one, I don't want my design to touch all the way to the seams. Okay. So as I set up the area, I'm going to use my glide foot, mm -hmm. and using the hole in the glide foot, I'm going to line the edges of it up with my piecing, and that's going to give me just that little tiny bit of wiggle room like what you did last week on yours. Yeah. So I'm going to go to my area tab, and I'm going to do a multi-point. Come up to my next one, and this is the one where when you're shorter and you have to really look to get it accurate, <laughs> don't lean on the bar! <laughs> Yeah, remember when you lean on the poles, it can actually change your positioning just a little bit. So be mindful of that. I was having to really focus on that yesterday. It was really stretching. Okay, so looking at my screen, I've got my area set up okay. with a little bit of wiggle room so that the design won't hit the line or the seam line. Mm -hmm. And then let's bring it in our design. File design open, and I chose a design from the Pro Stitcher Designs, no, nope, it's not Pro Stitcher Designs, I lied. It it's comes in the Designs Library though. Yes. Premium, premium. Designs Premium, yep, only library. in the Premium. So this is one of our designers, it's Christy Dillon, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping I said the right one, and it's the Destiny Block 4. Oh, cool. So I'll bring that design in. Mm. Okay, now to get it to fit, I'm gonna go to my Go To, under Modify, Skew, and I'm going to try border skew. Bugs flat! Whoa! Not what you're looking for. <laughs> regular skew. That one looks good. So I'm going to stick with the regular skew. Okay. And I usually try both of them just to see which one I like the best. Okay. I like that it's inside the pink box, but it's not filling up the space. I right. need to rotate it. Okay. So I'm going to go into rotate. And at this point, skew is still active. Right. So even when I rotate it, that skew is going to stay turned on. It fills in the space. That's perfect. 
I always like to look at like the the corners mm -hmm. and see if the design is actually pointing in there. If it's not, I could come over here and use my custom rotation mm -hmm. and just do little minor changes to it. But that one, I'm happy. Now, I usually say, when you're happy, what do you do? Baseline. Don't baseline on this one, okay? <laughs> this is a little trick. So I'm going to leave it unbaselined, but I'm going to go ahead and stitch it out. Pro stitch your quilt and run. And check my settings, proceed, and resume. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that it's fun. It's the perfect design. It goes so well with your fabric, um, like the designs in your fabric. And that green color, it just makes it pop, but it's a light enough color that when you stand back, it's going to like actually blend in with the white. I think it's yeah. perfect. Yeah, I, I was really happy when I first started quilting this. At first, I was like, eh, I don't know, but yeah. seeing it actually stitched out, I'm like, yeah, that's what I wanted. That's really great. So I know you have a trick. Yes. So we're going to hop over to this, this next, next big one. block. Okay. So I'm going to bring the machine over here. So I'm at this next block here, and I have not baselined. Correct. So when I hit area clear, my design is going to pop back to its original location. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm going to come over to this block, and I'm going to set up my area doing the same thing. Right and now. I'm using my handlebars because I'm in the area screen already. And then Kim's going to refresh for me. And let's zoom out so we can see where our design... Oh, look, it popped that design in for there us. There you go. So it's popped in there. Everything's mm -hmm. perfect. I'm ready to stitch. That's awesome. I love, I, I love, I do this a lot too when I'm uh, doing custom quilting mm -hmm. like this. It's just super fast. Yeah. Clear the area, reset it, stitch. Clear yep. the area, reset it, stitch. Trick is don't baseline. It's the one time yep. we're breaking our rule. It's usually it's but first baseline. <laughs> this one, mm -mm, no yep. baseline. So that baseline, what it does is it freezes all of the functions that are mm -hmm. on, you could say. Yeah. So if you baseline it, the skew is no longer active. Right. So when you create a new area, it's not going to automatically skew into there. Yep. But with that skew still turned on, you could do all of the blocks the same way. Exactly, exactly. So. And what? And just another thing to talk about a little bit. What happens if you try to skew a design that's been baselined and skewed? Okay. It could get ugly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> not like really ugly that you're going to notice it right away. Yeah. But if you skew a skewed design and skew it again and skew it again, your design is going to get very distorted over time. Exactly. Yeah. So, it's it's a great tip, great tip for custom quilting. So, yep. All right, what's the what's the next one you're going to work on here? Okay. So because you did, I love that you've done all of the blocks with Pro Stitcher. So, what's your <laughs> next Pro Stitcher block here? Well, let's use this small triangle here. Okay. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with this bigger one, mm -hmm. but this time I want to make sure that I only do three points on my area. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen, so okay. file, clear all, and then I'm going to come over here using that same wiggle room concept. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that right up there, go to my area tab, hit a multi-point, come across, multi-point, one more, multi-point. Okay, so I've got my area, and you'll notice over here the point count mm -hmm. is three. If you're working with triangles, that is very important. If it's mm -hmm. a point count four, your triangle skew, which we're going to use, won't be available. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so for this one, I actually took the previous design that uh -huh. we used, 
and I took it into designer and kind of chopped it up to okay. make it just a quarter of what this big one is. Okay. So I'm going to see if I can find that in here. File design open and it's just in my designs folder. So it's this one here. Okay, so that's the design that I created using the previous design from Kirsty Dillon. Okay. And it's not in the right orientation that I want, so I am going to go into modify, reposition, oh, sorry, rotate, and I'm just going to use the 45 and rotate it till it's in the same orientation as the area. Okay. Now for the fun part, skew, and now my triangle skew is available and I'm ready to stitch. Perfect. And that okay. that did skew in like perfectly. Yes. And again, I'm not going to baseline. Okay. I'm just going to stitch it out. that one. So are you going to do the same trick that you showed us before? Yes. Okay. So generally speaking, maybe this is just me, mm -hmm. but normally when I'm quilting, I'll, I'll kind of focus in one area. Mm -hmm. So my brain wants to go and stitch this next block, then this one and this one, and work here. Mm -hmm. But if we want to save time, I'm going to do all of the white triangles that are in this orientation going all the way across. Okay. So I don't have to do any rotating. Smart. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. I'm just going to come over to the next triangle. Uh -huh. And here's another quick little trick. So see where my start and end are? Uh -huh. Right in that corner? That's going to be the last corner that I'm going to do my ah, area in. I see what you're doing. Okay. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to clear my area. Okay. Drop a point. And we're going to zoom way out. I'm going to come over here, drop another point, and then I'm going to come up to the top corner, drop a point, and see how it popped in there? Perfect. And the start and stops there. I don't have to move the machine. I just hit Pro Stitcher, run, proceed. Christina, all about efficient quilting. Okay, so let's pretend like we did all of those mm -hmm. triangles all the mm -hmm. way across. Okay. Now I need to change the orientation. Okay. So I'm going to just come up to this one. Okay. And again, this point is going to be my last one that I'm going to drop. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go area tab, clear, multi point, multi point, multi point, pro stitcher. Oh, we Ooh. got a problem. <laughs> rotate. We don't want to stitch it out like that. Uh uh. Modify, rotate. 45, stitch Done. it out. Perfect. Do all of them in that orientation. Go to the next one. Just work your way back and forth across the quilt. Yep. I love that. What a so, great, great, great tips for efficiency. Stitches out pretty quickly. All right, so you've got still got one space on here you haven't quilted yet. Yes. So, so this is the really busy space, mm -hmm. all of the scrappy. And I have to say this was the hardest part for me. Because I was planning on just doing a, you know, my basic continuous curve through the whole thing, all the way across, and then somebody so stole that idea. Do continuous curve last week with that one? And Sorry. So I like to, you know, be unique, and I can't do the same thing somebody else is doing, obviously. Um, so I tried to come up with a different idea. Okay. And I was going to do it free motion. Let me just make sure that I got the right side up. There we go. Okay. Okay, so... Let's see, which way did that go? I think it was over here. So I was thinking maybe since this, I don't want it 
quilted very densely. Right. Maybe instead of doing something in each of these triangles, mm -hmm. maybe focus more on the bigger triangle. Mm. Look at the bigger picture. I like it. I yeah. like it. So I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to do a big continuous curve through the big triangle. Mm -hmm. But that left a bunch of open space. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, we'll just add something into it. And then I was like, oh, well, let's do this. And then Kim said, why don't you use the shape from this previous design? So I was like, oh, okay, but I don't want to have to try to free motion this bracket shape yeah, going yeah. in every possible direction. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I do have my limits. So what I ended up doing was digitizing this. Oh, smart. So I took this little section. Okay. And I just digitized some curves uh -huh. and then added that piece in each of the points there. Awesome. And I had to, you know, manipulate it a little bit to make it fit, yeah. stretch it out. So uh -huh. it doesn't look the exact same, but it's the same kind of co continuity throughout. Oh, yeah. Well, you're taking an element of the original design. I mean, and, and that's actually what you did here too. Mm -hmm. You took elements of this design to create a design. It, it does. It brings it all together. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So let's clear all. And I'm going to show you another little thing that I had to worry about with this one. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be working in this block right here. Okay. See, I'm on the edge of my quilt. Ooh, that's okay. tight. Can you see how much backing I have there? <laughs> uh, not a lot. Okay, so here is the problem. Let me show you. Do, 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 do. When I have my clamps up here, mm -hmm. when I try Ooh. to come over, I'm hitting those clamps. Especially with the glide foot. With the glide foot and with um, the throat of the machine. Mm -hmm. So I took some twill tape mm -hmm. and a, a pin, and I just pinned the twill tape on, then put the clamp onto the twill tape. And this is the same trick that I do with ruler work, when I've got that ruler base on and I can't get to the edge, even if I've got a big enough backing. So I just put that on there, and then that way the foot can come all the way over, the machine's not hitting it, and I can get to the edge. Smart. If I were doing an edge to edge mm -hmm. with this situation and I wanted to come off the quilt a little bit, I'm terrified Ooh. of hitting a pin. I was going to say that's a little that's yeah. a little close for comfort. <laughs> so I would not have a pin in there. I would just kind of hold the machine myself as it's stitching and just kind uh -huh. of play around, do a little <laughs> dance with the machine. Oh. But with this design, I do have a little bit more control, so I I know that I'm not going to be hitting a pin. Right. If I can get it pinned back on. Oh, wait, why did I unpin two of them? I don't know. Losing my mind. Okay, let me get, just get that one pinned back on. Okay, and you'll notice also I'm pinning like vertically. Mm -hmm. So if it were at an angle, I would risk hitting a little bit more. So I try to keep everything nice and straight. Okay, so let's focus on this little triangle here. I want to set up my area leaving a little bit of Wiggle, wiggle room. room. But I lied. This one I don't want wiggle room because I want the curve cross hatch. Oh. The continuous not, I'm not doing curve cross hatch. I'm doing You're continuous, doing continuous curve. curve. She's she's doing a modified <laughs> continuous curve that a a, a custom continuous yes. curve. <laughs> I want that to go right into the points. Okay. 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 But with it being on the edge, I've got to leave enough room for my binding to cover. Right. So I'm going to go to about a quarter of an inch, mm -hmm. and I'm right on my seam there. Area tab, multi-point, okay? I'm going to come down to the bottom one. And this one's a little bit easier because I can use my piecing mm -hmm. to kind of get right in that corner. Oh, right. You, you know exactly where that corner is you want to hit. If my piecing is accurate. Oh, come on, Christina. <laughs> Your piecing's always perfect. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't do anything but perfect piecing. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Now I'm coming up to this top corner, and I'm going to drop another point. Okay. Okay. So let's bring in that design that I digitized, and I've got it saved in my C file. Continuous curve with brackets. I like it. So that's it. Okay. Let's rotate it and get it in the proper orientation. Okay. Now we're going to just skew, triangle skew. It's in. And did you notice that oh. I had that machine where the start and stop is going to be? So well, look at you. we're ready to quilt. Pro Stitcher Quilt Run. Christina has a new title, The Efficient Quilter. <laughs> <laughs> Time is important. It is. So it's going to do the continuous curve, add in a bracket.
Christina, that design is perfect in there. And I love, I love that you uh, created a design there that it's still like the same density as what you've done other places on the quilt, but it stitches out a lot faster. It doesn't have as much detail because it's in busy prints. You're not going to see the quilting anyway. So. Exactly. And that was one of the things that I was thinking when I created that mm -hmm. is I just wanted to get some stitching on there. I knew that the stitching wasn't going to show up very much. So I wasn't super concerned with it being, you know, spectacular, um, but it, it's something to put in there and it's still continuous. And when I look at the back of the quilt, I don't know, but I kind of peeked. I did a couple rows yesterday yeah. and, and it's kind of fun to have that in there. Um, I do want to point out, I didn't do any stitch in the ditch on this quilt <gasps> and I'm okay. not going to. I don't blame you. I, I want it, it to. It doesn't need it. Yeah, it's, it's got enough quilting on it, mm -hmm. you know, to be draped over a bed, mm -hmm. um, it'll be good. So we'll, we'll keep working on it. And yeah, I'm, with this block, I'm gonna just do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Do one triangle orientation. Um, then, okay, so this triangle up here is that same orientation. So right. I would do that one, and then this, this one, one, that one, and go all the way across. Find the next one, rotate, come back, rotate, come back. I love it. So that will fill in all of the designs. So for this whole quilt, I'm going to use three designs. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I'm excited to see it finish. I th what you've done so far looks so great. Yeah, That's the next so thing to figure out is the binding. I was just going to say, do you have, so you are planning on binding it. I am going to bind it. And yeah, with what? I have no idea yet. Do you have any <laughs> leftover fabric from your so I'm, fat quarter stack? I'm, I'm thinking I might just do a crazy scrappy binding and just cool. take all of the leftover pieces. Um, I've got more from the fat quarter that I didn't put in here, but it's all the same color scheme. So Perfect. we'll make it work. Absolutely. Okay. That's going to be a lot of work for a king size though. <laughs> Lots of binding. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of binding. Oh, but you know what? I think it'll be the perfect finishing touch. So, but we'll we'll just have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Next month, when we do the final reveal on the quilts, uh, we'll get to see exactly what uh, Christina decides to do with the binding. All right. Any other tips with with this uh, awesome quilt and the custom quilt? I mean, custom quilting a, t a king size quilt. That's a that's a task to take on. Yeah, I, I love that you clarified that the tips were for the quilt, <laughs> not just random things that I'm going to spew out of my mouth. Well. Um, <laughs> You know, I, life, I think the biggest tips. thing, like is picking the thread color. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to change threads throughout, so I picked the color that would look nice in the white, but also will blend into the prints. All right, well, thanks so much. Uh, be sure to stick around and see some of our favorite quilts that we've seen this last week on Instagram. If you'd like to have your quilt featured, be sure to tag it with hashtag HandyQuilter. And don't forget about the quilt along hashtag. Hashtag Handy Quilter, Q-A-L. We've had so much fun seeing what everyone's posting on social media. We'd love to see where you are in the process of making your quilt. Um, we actually saw one earlier today and Christina went, oh, I wish I would have done that color combination. <laughs> yeah, it was so great. She had like one color for the big squares and a different color for these and it made the pinwheels just pop and I was just like, oh, I'm so jealous. I know. But I'm gonna be happy with this one. <laughs> so, so don't forget to use that hashtag Handy Quilter QAL, and let us see how you're coming along on your Seeing Stars quilt. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel, and have fun quilting.